Hey there, viewers, and welcome to the Repair It, Don't Wreck It channel. Today I'm working on a Toro Super Recycler lawnmower that has the Honda GCV160. When I start the lawnmower, a puff of blue smoke appears and stops after a few seconds. Now it does it all the time. I'm going to replace the intake valve seal. First thing you need to do is drain the oil. This vacuum pump works very well for oil changes. In the frame is a Honda engine that has the sump cover removed. I want to put the tube in to see where it bottoms out in the lowest part of the engine. This is going to drain out all of the oil out perfectly. Refill is about 12 to 13 ounces or 0.41 liters. Here is the valve stem seal. It is an original Honda part. There's not much to it, so it shouldn't be too hard to change. You can position the lawnmower on its back to make it easier to get the valve cover off. Removing the spark arrester made it much easier, only three bolts. I'm using a thin putty knife and a small hammer to break the seal. Go easy on it. It is sticking and I'm distorting the valve cover. I've had it off before and it's easy to bend the aluminum back into shape. As I work around the edge, it is starting to lift. Now that it's off, you can see there was way too much sealant on it. Previously, I had removed it to adjust the valves and overdid it when reinstalling. Look inside the engine. It is very clean. I've always changed the oil twice a season. I'm removing the intake rocker arm to see if it's cracked or bent. It looks in perfect condition. Just some light polishing from the can lobe. Another look inside. Plenty of clean oil all around the internals. I don't think maintenance caused the problem. Spark plug socket is 13 sixteenths. You can see the plug has fouled up. To be honest, I don't think the seal is going to solve my problem. Since I've gone this far, I'll replace it anyways. To replace the seal, you need to remove the valve spring. Caution, the valve will fall into the engine if you let it go after removing the valve spring. Before removing the valve spring, I'm going to attach my compressor to my compression gauge hose to add air to the cylinder to hold the valve in place. Rotate the engine so both valves are closed. 30 to 40 psi should be enough to hold it. You need to remove the Schrader valve from the hose to do this work. If you don't, air will not come from the compressor to the cylinder. Now you can install the hose adapter into the spark plug hole. Next, attach the hose to the adapter and the other end to your compressor air line. Once you've established there's pressure, remove the valve spring keeper and spring and carefully lift the old seal vertically. Just take your time and work it. Installing the new seal is basically the reversal of the removal. Install the valve spring and the keeper. There's a keyhole slot in the keeper to facilitate installation. Triple check to make sure it is seated and the valve stem is centered before removing the air hose. Rotate the spring and press down on it a couple of times. Install the valve lifter and rotate the engine. Everything should move slowly. The valves will open and close as shown. Once you're satisfied, go ahead and remove the air hose and install a spark plug. Don't over tighten it. Spark plugs are generally torqued around 12 to 14 foot pounds, but really if you tighten it, just snug, you'll be okay. I like to remove all of the old gasket material. Start with a razor blade to get the heavy pieces off. Clean the rest with a brass wire wheel. You can do the same thing on the engine. Plug in some paper towel into the engine cavities to keep any debris out. Here is a final clean with a pad 
and I like to use lacquer thinner as it dries fast and clean. A bit of compressed air to blow any loose pieces out of the way before I remove the paper towel. Test fit the valve cover after you have straightened it out. This isn't too bad. It's not perfect, but it'll work. Apply your sealant sparingly. This is Permatex. It's rated for oils. Basically, you can find it at any automotive supplier or shop. This time, I won't go crazy with it. The instructions say to hand tighten the bolts and let it sit for about an hour. After that, tighten them up to the proper torque, or again, they are 10 millimeters. Just don't go crazy, use some common sense. Now the moment of truth. No change, still blows through smoke. I had nothing to lose, so I decided to dismantle the engine completely. I've never done this before. It was not that difficult. Basic tools were all that were required. After a careful examination of all the parts, the only damage that I could see was vertical scoring on the piston skirt. They were deep enough to catch a fingernail, but not that deep. The cross hatching on the cylinder was basically gone, and it also had some very light lines which could not be caught with a fingernail. I decided to order a new set of piston rings and a honing tool to clean up the cylinder. It worked out very well. I polished the skirt with 800 grit wet and dry sandpaper. It didn't get the deep scratches out, but I did smooth off the edges. Since I didn't find anything, I believe a piece of aluminum casting slag fell into the oil from the inside of the engine and worked its way up on the skirt as the lines were vertical. I noticed when I put on the new rings, they had a lot more spring to them more than the ones that I took off, which of course were used. I think it was a combination of both. This lawnmower is eight years old and used on a fairly large lot. It has served me well and I really like this machine. Once it was put back together, the problem was solved. There are many videos on these engines, especially the Honda 160s and the 190s, on how to take them apart and put them back together. The purpose of my video was to show the valve stem seal replacement on the intake. Then it evolved to a complete disassembly. This project was a lot of fun. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and as always, repair it. Don't wreck it. Thanks for watching.